Panasonic S1R, the Megatron of full frame mirrorless cameras. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my review on this absolute beast. Let's roll that intro. Stop, before you carry on, please consider subscribing to the channel for more camera news, reviews, and how-tos from the world of photography and video. Right off the bat, I would like to say a huge thank you to Panasonic for letting me try out this camera and test out its features at the photography show in Birmingham last week. The very first thing I noticed about this camera was its size. It's bloody massive. If you've got large shovel-like hands, it's gonna be a dream. But if you've got small dainty-like fingers, it might be tough to hold. Size-wise, it actually feels more like a DSLR rather than a full-frame mirrorless camera. But it is robust. I mean, this thing feels extremely solid, almost destruction-proof. Anyway, let's start with the outside of the camera, shall we? Toppity down, the S1R has a dial on the left-hand side, allowing you to switch between mode options. To the right-hand side of this, you have an LCD top-down display. Just above the display, you have a focus dial, allowing you to switch between single, continuous, and manual focus points. Further right, you have a dedicated white balance button, ISO button, and exposure buttons. Ooh, did I say that the LCD display lights up? Above this, you have a rather chunky on-off switch. And if we take a look at the back of the camera, this is where you're greeted with one of the S1R's very impressive features. Panasonic have created the world's highest resolution, EVF. That's right, we have a 5.76 million dot OLED display. This produces the kind of quality that you would see on an OVF, but with the added benefit of all the extra features and options you can see when using an electronic viewfinder. To add to this, we also have a 120 frames per second refresh rate. This means you're not gonna get the jiggity jaggedy movement. You're gonna get that lovely smooth movement when you're shooting moving subjects with this camera. Down to the 3.2 inch, 2.1 million dot LCD triaxial angle display. This is a clear, bright and sharp display. Unfortunately though, it's triaxial angle. I hate that word, but basically it means that you can't fully articulate the screen. You just get these movements shown here. You get the up and the down, the vertical and a bit to the side. The S1R has a dual card system, providing you with the SD and the QXD card slots, which is a nice touch, ignored by some of the other bigger brands. I won't mention any names. It's Canon and Nikon. Continuing on the external of the camera, it doesn't feel like Panasonic have tried to put on too many buttons on the outside. This actually feels quite comfortable when you're taking photos. You're not accidentally knocking buttons and knobs and causing things to happen which you don't want happening. Okay, let's get into some of the fun stuff, shall we? Let's talk about the inner features that this camera has to offer. The Panasonic S1R has a whopping 47 megapixels, or should that be 187 megapixels? Yes, did I just say 187? I did. Not only have Panasonic got the 47.3 megapixel resolution, which is the highest out there right now, They've also added something else. The S1R has a high resolution mode. This takes eight individual photos with tiny sensor shifts between each. The outcome is an absurd 16,000 by 11,000 pixel raw file. I will say though that this feature does require the subject in the photo to be pretty much still. You can't be moving around with this mode. It's not gonna work if you do. Let's talk frames per second. The Panasonic S1R has a nine frames per second shooting speed, which is pretty decent, but this is when it's only locked on the first frame. If it's not locked on the first frame, it goes down to six frames per second. Now that's not very decent, but Panasonic have put a clause in the contract. 
They offer a 6K photo mode. Basically put, you can take an 18 megapixel picture from a 30 frames per second video. I hope you stay with me on that one. Now, of course, it's lower resolution, but if you want the speed, you got it there. Now, we're gonna get back to the extra weight of this camera because it's definitely heavier than its rivals, but there is a very good reason for this. The Panasonic S1R has a six-stop hybrid stabilization. You get an in-body five-axis stabilization system offering up to 5.5 stops of compensation. Add that to the Lumix S range of lenses, which also have their own stabilization, and between them, you have a combined stabilization effect of six stops. And this is why the Panasonic S1R can shoot at very low shutter speeds and remove any camera shake from the equation. Let's talk about video modes on the S1R. It shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second, which is very impressive. There is a tiny crop with the 60 frames per second though, but it's not really something that you will notice. It shoots 4K 8-bit 420 internally and 422 8-bit externally. It's a real shame that they didn't make that 10-bit, which you actually find on the lower priced S1. Now, this is by no means a video comparison of the two cameras, but if you are a video creator, I'm gonna save you guys some time. Just choose the S1. Why would I say such a thing? Well, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. It's aimed at video creators more, and also it offers all of the same features that you get on the S1R. The only thing that's missing is the 60 frames per second at 4K. Also, on the S1, you actually experience 422 at 10 bit through HDMI output. Now, if Panasonic have had a tough time with anything in recent years, it's been the autofocus system. Panasonic have been using a contrast based autofocus using depth by defocus. Now, this has not changed. The S1R still has this focus system which some people which are interested in the camera but don't like the contrast-based autofocus might be a little bit disappointed with. I've got to say though, the S1R's autofocus feels considerably more refined. You get less of that pulsing effect that you experience when using contrast-based autofocus. It can also identify multiple human subjects and it does this really well. You can also get cats, dogs, and birds and trap them, even when their back's turned. Don't know when you'd want to do that, but hey. I got to experience this at the photography show, and it really is impressive. This feature is definitely something which has been added into this camera, and it's a good job because the autofocus system, which they use, does feel a little bit dated. Let's talk lenses. If you're buying a camera, you're gonna to wanna to have a good choice of lenses to add on to it. And this is because, let's face it, lenses make all the difference. Panasonic have announced three new lenses, almost the holy trinity, but not quite. The Lumix S Pro 50mm f1.4, the Lumix S Pro 70-200mm f4, and the Lumix 24 through to 105mm f4 macro. But three, it's not a big number when you're thinking of lenses, is it? But don't worry, because Panasonic have very wisely partnered with the likes of Sigma and Leica to produce more lenses for the camera system. Also, they have said that they will produce a whopping 48 new lenses for the S1 and the S1R by the end of 2020. So it's not really that long to wait. So here it is, let's sum up the S1R, shall we? This is a big full frame mirrorless photography monster. If you're looking for an exceptional camera for photography, which will deliver incredibly sharp images, quality, with a whole bunch of features to boot, then the S1R has got to be at the top of your list. It's not perfect though, no, but what is? I mean, it's heavy, its autofocus is not as good as its rivals, and there is definitely better camera choices out there for sports and wildlife photography. That being said though, if you're looking for pure image quality, then Panasonic have done it. Panasonic should be proud of both the S1 and the S1R.
I hope the Panasonic do not get overshadowed by such brands like Canon, Nikon and Sony because this camera definitely deserves its place up there with the big boys. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. I was supposed to be getting my hands on the Sony A6400 this week, but unfortunately it's been delayed and I'll be getting it on Sunday, I think. So some reviews will be coming next week about that very camera. If you wanna watch them, make sure you hit the subscribe button for more camera news, reviews, and how to's from the world of photography and video. Whatever you do today, guys, make sure you make it an awesome one and I'll see you in the next video.